today we have uh, our guest, Mayra Garcia from the United States, Turtle Island. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that yes. is Dallas. And she, but actually, she, her ancestors are from Mexico and yes. from a very special town that is in. I guess San Luis Potosí, and there are indigenous people. And I would like that Mayra tell us a little bit your ancestors and all this culture. I mean, yeah. So nice. Thank you. Yeah. Well, actually, um, a lot of people don't know this, but Turtle Island is considered all of North America. So that includes Canada, um, all that region all the way down to the tip of um, Panama. So all of that is from a distance away, it looks like a giant turtle. So that's the sort of art sometimes I share with um, students, is just being able to share that history about Turtle Island. But So I do consider myself to be from Turtle Island, but also my ancestors being that, you know, we're all from this area being Texas, Mexico. Um, so, but yes, I was born specifically in Dallas, Texas, and my family is in San Luis Potosí. I have family in Monterrey too, but they're all from a little place um, in the state of San Luis Potosí. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm fascinated with the history, like um, with Quetzalcoatl and that, you know, not specifically guided us down to Mexico, but a lot of my ancestors, Huitzilopochtli, um, um, posing as Quetzalcoatl, you know, migrated a lot of people into Mexico, which is the story of the Mexican flag. But yes, um, I've resided here in Dallas specifically all of my life. Um, but I make all types of art. Um, I do anything from like sketches to oil paintings to murals. Um, but my favorite type of art is being able to do that type of art that contributes to communities. Um, for example, one of my favorite art pieces that I ever did was in Guatemala. So we all, I made little bamboo baskets and we collected recycled art from different colors of the rainbow and then made a big Quetzalcoatl dragon wow. to represent like a rainbow dragon. Beautiful. And the locals really appreciated it because we cleaned up their ocean. <laughs> so you are an artist, natural artist or you study some words of the ladies? How did you learn about this? Yeah, so for me, art is such a broad subject you know like sometimes when people say artists i also like include like i'm a musician i'm just a creative being with everything um i you know professionally teach um as a substitute teacher and sometimes i teach students you know different forms of art like the other day we created texas with salt clay and then we're doing all the regions of Texas, but then with my children, I went ahead and like expanded it. So we did all of Turtle Island. So we did all of North America. So meaning all the United States, we're including Mexico, we're including Canada, we're inc including Greenland and making that a giant turtle. So we made that with like, kind of how you make tortillas de harina, but with salt, a lot of salt. And for the coloring, we used um, like coloring food. Mm -hmm. So, and then we just did different colors for different um, places. So the United States was this color, Mexico was this color, so they can see the difference. But then at the end, it's just a giant turtle and you're like, okay, so so Greenland is the head or like Canada is this, so it was really fun. But I, I guess I would consider myself like an educator that teaches about art, but also an art student as well, where I'm always like practicing new forms of art. But I particularly enjoy mostly when it's helping out the community or bringing awareness to um, situations that need awareness through art. Oh, very nice. Yeah. But also you practice a kind of uh, energy therapy that uh, you told me for like so, Reiki. Uh, Reiki has, you know, different branches. Um, it originated from um, a man in Japan that he self-healed himself um, through a waterfall. And he, at least the branch of Reiki that I teach, 
and he was able to self heal and learn the teachings from Reiki. They give us different examples of different um, people that have done it themselves. Like, you know, Jesus is well known for healing and using, Mm -hmm. you know, a connection to be able to heal. So it's kind of just energy work, um, Mm -hmm. but it's, you don't touch the body. It's just energy um, form of, it's not exactly say, I'm like, this is art Reiki, but it's more, healing quote-unquote healing or rejuvenating energy so let's say that i just did reiki yesterday on um my dear madrina um because she's experiencing she's had cancer okay she's having it again so as soon as i have to do distant reiki, so what you do is you visualize that person and be able to send them positive energy towards um towards Reiki. So that's what Reiki is, is being able to heal through energy work. But yeah, so that's more specifically what it is. And I learned that um, through different friends that like got connected to it and learned more about it. Uh, I am gonna become a master in Reiki, so it's three levels. Um, but yeah, I, I just find that whenever I hear the word healing, like to me, that's the closest thing that I do that's that. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. So, uh, so this is like a kind of you are like a kind of holistic person combining different techniques, different things. Because also maybe art can be a healing technique, yes, for people. I don't know if you use art for for helping people. And anyway, so now I wanted to, that you speak more about yourself uh, the way of um, yeah, um, so which kind of as far as kind of um, that I know I mentioned my actual profession as a substitute teacher so I don't I get to t- teach different subjects like sometimes I'll get the pleasure of teaching music or right now I'm teaching English honors um, and but I enjoy mostly like on my own time to, as far as art to create music like that's probably my favorite um because whenever i have time to myself i'm like okay let me get that song i'm working on and develop it further um because i feel like that's one of the most creative forms of art that exists is our voice and whenever you're able to you know create it in a form where it inspires others to create it themselves and sing along like to me that's very empowering um but yeah i have songs like Oya Heya, which I did where it empowers people, but towards the end, it is able to be a song that is able to be sung along, yeah, collectively. Well, uh, great, so you have like um, artists that inspire your past, like as writers? Yes, um, growing up, I was always inspired by Selena Quintanilla, she was, like just i was only five but her music was so inspiring to me i as i you know grew older i developed just you know to reading and i was pablo Coelho, um as a writer i um like alicia keys as you know songwriter there's many different people and then obviously as i um expanded my spirituality i learned about Gandhi. um jesus has always been part of my life so all these people are always been so inspiring um maria de guadalupe of course um so people that just share their goodness to the world to me. Are the- but yes, I'm always inspired by people too that I meet on a daily basis that are doing good in the world through just small actions. Especially when people are sharing their awareness of what's going on in the world. And, you know, for example, like small changes where you're asking people to cease um, their weapons you know towards peace and human rights to me that's also my passion is being able to bring awareness to the power of one's voice to bring peace into the world because i believe i'd like to be everybody did that um you can really make a big difference and create changes do you say that uh, you like uh ama as a guru uh, yes yes i've hugged her twice <laughs> He's a great example of changes is being able to, um, you know, create the changes you want to see in the world is one of his most famous quotes. Yes, I also mentioned um, goddess Isis, which is known for to be like an Egyptian goddess. 
I uh, mentioned, um, I believe it was Mary right. Magdalene as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. As, you know, one of the most um, closest followers of Jesus. So tell us, tell us. you are considered a spiritual person, yeah? I would go and say that, yes. <laughs> so, what is mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, do you think that the spiritual life is different from life? Different from life so, I feel they're intertwined. You know, I feel like you can live your life and do all the daily tasks you need, but it's always good um, to always have that in mind, like gratitude. And maybe like simple Zen practices, like being present in the moment. Like to me, those things might seem like ordinary things. Like, yeah, of course, like be present. And, you know, like right now I'm being present with you and having this conversation with you. And I just see that as like, that can be a spiritual experience, you know, just being able to center the mind and silence it and be like completely shedding light on what's in front of you. Like to me, those are just like simple Zen practices that anybody can contribute to everyday life. Very it's gratitude. Yes. Yes. Gratitude at the beginning of the day and then gratitude at the end of the day. So do you have do you teach yoga? Teach yoga? Or something like that? Well, yes. Um as far as yoga, I really believe in sharing my yoga, which is mostly connected to the elements. Okay. Um so it's not like you can research it and you'll probably end up with like children yoga from Spain that's called Mayan yoga. So my, and then you find maybe a few um, actual Mayan elders that teach uh, Mayan yoga on YouTube. But Mayan yoga is being able to know that your ancestors, you know, were learning about yoga. And it just means being connected to the body, whether it's through dance form, through flow and letting it move to move energy and knowing that it's connected to our elements like the sun, the earth, the fire, the wind, etc. So being able to be one with those elements and kind of mimic those elements or nature or animals and all those things, to me that's like my yoga. It's more like not just strict poses because sometimes that can get restricted, but being able to have be like more of a free flow dance, intuitive. Yes. So to me, that's my yoga, which um, I mostly self-teach, but, you know, I'm always sometimes sharing little bits and pieces, mostly like information. And that's what I mostly shared in the past, just to bring awareness to the types of history of like my murals that show um, their themselves sharing yoga. Both yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, do you follow any discipline yourself to recover your energy after healing someone mm -hmm. using a uh, Reiki or the after, uh, yeah, after being with people? Which yeah. So, I think mostly just like self love and being able to stay hydrated and knowing that, you know, if you did a big energy work, just be able to be my, more mindful that you might yourself might feel more tired. So something quickly that you can do, I learned in a um, in an ashram, was that you can just kind of shake your hands, and that kind of loosens up energy, so you're shaking it off, kind of thing. Um, so you can do that immediately after any healing practice. But overall, it'd be more like staying centered and meditative um, afterwards, maybe giving gratitude and being intuitive. So sometimes just speaking your mind when doing that healing, because maybe that person needs to hear something and it might not make sense at the moment, but <laughs> if it, you sense the thing, yeah, just say it and then be like, oh, to them it might make sense. And they're like, oh, that's interesting you say that, or you know, they might find a connection. So just being present again is very important and doing a lot of um, self-love, like I said, hydrating, um, meditating, um, being conscious, and resting is important too, relaxation. Thanks, Marika. Um, so tell us a little bit more about your technique in uh, how do you 
which techniques do you use when you work in art? Um, like watercolors, uh, which kind of oh yeah, you choose and um, what they, what is your favorite or do you have any preference or not? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I feel like using the elements closest to me is my favorite. Like being able to be like, how can I look at my surroundings and create art? Like I gave you guys the example in Guatemala with the recycled art. Um, right now, an example is coming to mind, one in Egypt where I use sand. So I carried sand from a mountain that was white and created it with the sand that was on the ground in, in Egypt. And then I just created hieroglyphics with the white sand and yeah and it stayed for for weeks i started it at the beginning of the month came back and i still saw the same sand paintings that i had done on the floor and um these are practices done by navajo people like different indigenous um beings draw with sand the tibetans also draw with like you know very specific um tools with very like each grain of sand can create art so i would say sand is one of them so for me um nature elements are like probably one of my favorites you know um water leaves anything earth clay anything that you can feel the earth and be connected to the planet like my favorite or clean it and bring, bring awareness to like maybe cleaning rivers cleaning oceans like but i I also love instruments, so music, any instrument that I can get my hands on and learn um, or activate, reactivate um, the teachings I might have in it, like that's also one of my favorite things as far as the tool. Yeah. Elements, so you speak a lot about, about elements, that is uh, something that I catch a lot from you, that yeah, yeah. you like to relate uh, a lot with the air, it's like uh, water, you mean water, mm -hmm. earth, um, fire, wood, uh, yes. another element, yeah. only that kind of element. Yeah. So, for example, we're talking about things that I enjoy doing. Another thing that I really enjoy doing is hula hooping or with fire. Okay. Hula hooping. Um, so, just playing with fire, like, you oh, know, okay. just okay. in the air and like okay. playing with it with the staff, with the stick where you put fire on both ends. Oh, okay. Um, but I like. I don't practice it as much because you, in order to not ignite it with um, artificial fuel, you have to put the fire with coals in a cage. So yeah, it's very, it's it's not easily accessible. So, and it's, but it has, but with determination, it's possible mm -hmm. where you're only using the coals from the fire and then being able to play with the fire in that way. So, but. For me, that's fun because you're creating dance and you're creating like images with the fire as you're dancing along with it. Um, but clay, probably one of the last um, art pieces I did with clay was I grabbed clay from where I was staying at and I, well, earth and I created clay and I made like tablets, like kind of like recreated tablets and did, oh. I'm, I'm really into hieroglyphics for mm -hmm. ancient art. So I created um, different, symbols so ancient symbols mm -hmm. just recreating them to bring kind of our, our into not a more intuitive but more like our subconscious self that might recognize these symbols they might look simplistic but like usually can go from very simple like circles triangles to very in-depth um symbols but they all have like a representation talking about our history and the connectedness that we all have. Beautiful, yes. I also love a lot of symbols and these kind of things. It's, I am really connected to yeah. ancient. <laughs> yeah, love yes, it. Yes, nice. love it. Um, okay, so let's uh, see what it makes. Uh, do, you, do you have any um, how to say a class online by uh, do you have any web page where people can reach you? 
Um, <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. So I created my first blog in 2012, a little bit earlier before that, but where I published it. Um, so the one that is still um, up now is melotus.wordpress.com. So right there, I created um, what looks like a lotus flower. So a circle, a yin yang in the middle, and then the outside are petals. So it's just like seven petals, and then an eighth one for gratitude. So it's fashion, art, festivals, music, Turtle Island, spirit foods, and Mayan yoga. So for me, those are like my seven passions, which um, I have links to. And I created a segmented blog for each topic where I either educate you on the type of fashion that I like, on the different fashion artists, um, designers that you can find all over the world or that are local to me. The same thing with artists, um, the same thing with festivals that um, either I've been to or that people sometimes create. Um, and I I love also sharing about other people. So um, I do that mostly now through my magazine, which is a digital magazine called okay. Cyberzine. Yeah, Cyberzine. And that way I share all these seven petals. Mm -hmm. And each, each um, um, I call it edition. And then I break it down to sections. But each edition I do once a month. The first of the month, I always publish a new zine, a new cyber zine. And then throughout the month, I maybe do new editions and then sections to that to elaborate on maybe a pedal, which is like, like we now know fashion art, etc. So all those seven pedals. But the eighth one is always gratitude because we always have to show that, you know, being grateful and saying okay. gracias for, for everything. Oh, wow, I, I am just looking your web web page and it's so nice. Yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to also add you to our web page, Shalazar. Thank you so, so much. These different kind of therapies or artists that want to gather and we collaborate in a different way. So people can reach you actually. Wonderful. <laughs> you don't know. Thank you so much. Yes. Thanks for that. This is lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah. I think uh, we cover all the questions. Uh, you want to describe the five words, what yeah. define your work, um, what do you want to share? Um, yes, I'm just going to be more intuitive with this one. I know I, I had some things we planned, but I would say um, grateful, um, abundant, love, loving, um, enthusiastic, and let's see another one, and inspiring. Inspiring, yes. beautiful. Yes. Very nice. Thank you, Myra. This is uh, wonderful. So, thank you, friends. It's so good to see you. I'm so glad we did this. <laughs> we are back. Uh, so, Myra, open our next <laughs> video clips. Yeah. Uh, did you have, did you, did you, I remember that in the beginning you want to show something there, like. Uh, no, I just said, I just did this for this interview where I'm at right here in Texas. I just said howdy y'all. Howdy, howdy y'all. Yeah. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, it's a rainy day here in Texas. Um, everybody stay safe, stay warm, and stay grateful. And remember your voice um, matters and be able to share how we all want peace and love in the world. And don't be afraid to, to share that need to, you know, save lives of children and be able to speak out to your government however you need to have your voice heard even individually when you don't feel okay like it's good to say it share how you feel um let us know that you want peace and love in the world